sometimes. As you can see, the river beds are almost dry. These are seasonal rivers. Um, so the larger animals, buffalo, elephant, they're now moving many distant, you know, many kilometers for water. That's why we're getting a lot of um, elephants this way. And many of them are transboundary, which means they can come from Congo. Because to, the, to those big ones, it's one big forest. So they just keep moving in search of water. They dry out very quickly. But when the rains come, they can be so forceful that when they reach the community, smaller children can be taken by the rivers. Wow. At times we have a program down at Lake Mutanda to teach the people to swim. But as I say, these waters can be very unpredictable. Yeah. Um, we have some more paper here, if we can remove, please. So this here, this is buffalo. So usually the bigger animals like elephant and uh, buffalo, they come out of the primary forest at night and sometimes they can go into the community and raid the crops. But at this time of day, they're going back into the forest. So this wall here is what we call the buffalo wall. It stretches from the Congo border to the Rwandan border. And it's in place to keep these big animals in from the community. But they do still manage to get out. And what they do is, you can just imagine the elephant, he uses his body like this to knock it. So the sheer strength of him is just incredible. And as we go through the forest, you'll see big, big trees that they've brought down. So they'll use a body like that, and then they'll wrap the trunk around and pull it down with the trunk. Um, yeah, it just amazes me every time I see it. All of these elephants that we get, they are really the, the best seed dispersers of the fruiting trees and flowering trees. Um, so if those big animals were not around, this forest would certainly not be as it is today. They really are what we call the mega gardeners. Even though they do bring down the big trees and keep places open, it just regenerates so quickly. Their dung is the best fertilizer um, and it protects the seeds before they even germinate as well. It is just the best. So they are so, so important to this place. Even though some days they can disturb us and they disturb the monkeys, they are vital. And so as you can see from the research, even though we're here about the monkeys, also the other animals we have to take into account, it's about the whole ecosystem, understanding it completely. It's like one living organism. Um, you can't separate one from the other. So um, it's, it's, it's vital that everything is, is really monitored well. Um, so yeah, it's not just about monkey at the end of the day. Yeah, so. And I'll point this out to you. This, this is dying now, but it's, one, it's what, um, a bamboo shoot. And in the rainy season, these grow very quickly and this is what a lot of the animals feed on the monkeys absolutely love them um, but for the monkeys they like them when they're very fresh and small that's when they're at the most nutritious as they grow they lose their nutritional value um, but even buffalo bush buck will feed on these um, but now it's the dry season so they're not around and so the monkeys what they like to do is they take this very tender, like that, and they'll eat this very tender end here, yeah, very small, and then this falls to the ground, and from that we can tell where monkey have been feeding, yesterday, the day before, so those are some of the signs that we're looking for, but um, the more time you spend in the forest you get used to 
all your senses become heightened. Um, so that is one of the food resources for, for monkeys and a lot of the animals. And as you can see the local community, they farm right up the edge of the buffalo wall. The, the indigenous people, the Batwa, they did live in this forest before it was gazetted as a national park. And even some of the local people around in the community. So even they had to be moved out of the park. Um, at the time, they couldn't understand why, and there was a bit of, you know. But when I talk to the local people now, um, and how they are benefiting from the National Park as a tourism place. Um, now they, they realise the benefits and understand. Um, and the Batwa also are getting help these days as well, um, even with schooling. Um, so, you know, progress has, has been made um, and people now are very supportive of the National Park. And we do employ local people here. And it's like when the big animals get out and they raid their crops, you know, these big animals, they're never harmed by the people. You know, they, they tolerate. We get them back into the forest and so everybody's happy. <laughs> Thank you so much for participating. This is the end of the culture dance. Yeah, thank you very, very much. Thank you so much. So this is elephant. Um, it's from a couple of days ago. A very big male. And as you can see, it's very fibrous. They don't have a very good digestive system for grasses. But it was a very big bull elephant around. And we know there's a female also with a baby around. And of course the forest elephants, their tusks, they point down. Because some of the fruits in the forest, they need the tusks to break them open. Yeah, and it's amazing how they can move through the forest and we can't even hear them sometimes. And they can, even in the bamboo forest, they can manoeuvre themselves. I really don't know how they do it. And they're so well camouflaged. This is what elephant is carried out of the forest. This piece of wood. But this is very small to what they normally carry. But as we go, you'll see the big, big trees they brought down. Just to give you an idea. If you can realise the sheer force, this is the dry season. So the, the floor, the hard ground, and yet the impact. This, this is elephant. We see the marks of their the tusks on the trunks. Yeah. You can see how this, these markings here. This is from elephant that has passed by. Sometimes when they're around, we can even smell them. They have a very strong odour, the same as buffalo, same as gorilla. For the gorillas, it's a very musky smell, very strong 
um, order. It's, it's hard to, to put it into words. Start smelling, yeah? Because um, you will smell them. Especially if wind is blowing your way. Um, but yeah, so even like I said, in the forest, everything, all your senses are important. Um, uh, this man here is one of the experts at habituating gorillas. It's not so easy. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. takes two and a half to three years. Mm. 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 Uh, you keep on visiting them on a daily basis, following where they have passed, where they have nested, and uh, to know the composition of the group, the silverbacks, adult females, juveniles, and the infants. conservation at the cutting edge, you know, especially being on um, the borders with Congo and Rwanda um, and the instability of Congo all the time. Um, so that's why we get many of the animals here when there's problems there. They come here for safety because they're heavily persecuted on that side, um, especially elephant. I really don't know what the answer is to such problems because it's so well organised. And the, the trade in wildlife, um, it's a, the money, it's as big as the arms deals or um, drug deals. And so when there's so much money involved, how are you ever going to combat? I, I must say as well, um, as we go, that we're always looking for signs of illegal activity here, um, poaching. Um, and it's not just for animal. Um, we might find the odd wire snare, it's not as it used to be. It's really reduced these days. Um, even the taking of bamboo illegally um, has reduced. So any signs, then we follow them up and deal with it. Uh, you can see these forest areas here by the base of Sabinia. This is where we are heading to these places. Even from here sometimes we can hear the monkeys. The most important thing to understand is their movement patterns. Because for them, it's a whole network of roads. They know exactly which tree they're going to use, even down to which branch. They all move single file. So if they're going in a certain direction and they have this big tree here, that is part of their home range, they will always use that tree and the same branch to cross that part of the forest. So we call these places their crossing points. So sometimes when we see them going that way, we know where they're going to go and where they're going to cross. So we can actually go to those places and we can sit and wait for them to come to us instead of us completely. Um, with chimpanzee, it can take 10 years. Um, and monkeys are far more difficult. You've got a bigger group, you've got many individual. So you're, you're never going to see 100 monkeys every day. So there's, they're going to be habituated at different levels. Um, but once the male, the dominant male, is relaxed with you, then the others will feel calmed down and, uh, and are more relaxed. As you can see, this area here, we do have open places within the forest, but there's also closed places like this. And you can see how dark. When you enter, if you look at both sides, you'll see how difficult it is to even see if there is elephant or buffalo around. 
it's always good to just stand and just take it all in the silence the, the, the darkness the, I mean just look through how thick This one is Sabinia. The visitors, they love this mountain because when they reach the third peak, then they're on the border with Uganda, Rwanda and Congo.